Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's all good and great and wonderful and fantastic. Everything here is pretty good. I got to play Narrow Gauge this weekend. I got to test the new map uh, on Tabletopia because I tried to print it in my printer. I don't know, something's wrong with it. So it, it's printing crappy. I need a large format printer. But I'm gonna keep making games with boards. Anyway, the point is, I got to play it. Uh, if you didn't watch Friday, I've been trying to make um, Narrow Gauge feel a little bit more um, interesting. <laughs> I think the game lacked interesting decisions for most of its most of its life, uh, and I think the reason is one of my playtesters said this weekend that uh, he enjoys limitations in games and it's specifically like you know co-op games where you're just constantly fighting limitations but in this game the limitations felt not fun and i agree with him uh, the game was very very limiting and so one way i decided to try to combat that is by adding six more cities to the board so the original board had 10 cities now there's 16 which means that all of the companies have Lots of cities, very close, within reach. And it also means that on your turn, there's always multiple things you could do. Uh, and what I found was it became a lot more enjoyable. I'm still not convinced that the cards, the card play is right for the game. Uh, in this particular game, you, you play a card and based on the card design as how you put trains on the board, uh, I'm not convinced yet that the cards are correct. I, I want them to be right. I'm trying really hard to make the game work with them because they were the the impetus for this game. They're what they're where this this game started. And so I would like to keep them in. Uh, and and it, I feel like I'm at a point where what I have is much better than where I started. You know, I've been excited for this game since day one. The first time I played it, I was like, oh, there's something here. And then Em and I kept testing it and kept going, oh yeah, there's something here. And I kept adding tweaks and layers and things to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun, a little bit more involved. And I've gotten to a point where I'm really close, I think, but I'm still chasing something. I don't know what it is yet. The 16 cities, the, the additional six cities meant that you had options and it was pretty, you know, Oddly enough, it meant that your turn had more options, but the game was faster. And I think because instead of the goal of your turn being trying to figure out how to combine cards in your hand to make something happen, your turn now is you get to pick what you want to do more often. So the commodity market now plays a much bigger role, much, much bigger role in the game. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, and it means that if I've got a lot of purple commodity, you want to take it from me. So your turn now turns into how can I connect to purple? Not how can I connect to anything because I don't have any options, but how can I get to purple? And it meant that you now have like a, a goal, a puzzle, something to, f to fight for. And I think that felt really good. Um, so it, it, interestingly enough, the game didn't take very long. Like it was shorter, even though you have more options. So there's more options, but it, you, you you get to have more of a choice over your option, which meant you're not searching, trying to find a solution, as opposed to you're trying to make your option work. And it means the game clicks along a little faster. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I didn't expect that. I expected it to make the game take longer because now you just have too many options. And I think, I think this is indicative of like every game I've ever designed. I always design limitations. I, my games are based around limitations and I don't necessarily know that that's correct. Uh, there are good reasons to have limit, limiting factors in games uh, to control player growth or to um, add, especially if you can add multiple limitations, it means that it gives players various paths to follow. As If you go for the you know, fuel generation and I go for the food generation, those are, those feel great. And it means that I'm going to have more food than you and you're, but you're going to have more fuel than me, but it feels like we're playing something different. There's limit. those limitations work, but often my limitations are very arbitrary. They're very much just like, you can only do this because I said so. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily 
make for a good game. It makes for interesting puzzles, uh, but not necessarily good games. And I think that's the the big takeaway from this particular game development prog process on this particular game is that it does feel like I just arbitrarily threw in limitations. Uh, and I think that that was just a product of, I guessed, right? Like I made a deck of cards that had trains on them that you could put on the board. And then I just guessed like the uh, 10 feels good. Like that gives me two resources that are less, you know, that are less or more rare than the other two resources. And that feels okay. And I just played that way. And instead of trying to say, you know, what exactly is, am I going for with this? Am I going for a, a puzzle game? Like, no, that wasn't what I wanted at all. I wanted a light, airy, kind of fun train game for two players. Um, what I have now is more like a light, airy card game that happens to have a train theme. And I think that's okay. I think it's fine. Um, I still want to chase more though. I still think there's more room for the design, uh, but I'm also trying to keep it simple, right? I'm trying to keep it, uh, I don't wanna introduce mechanics just because I feel like the game needs more mechanics. In fact, I like the mechanics that I have. I just have to find a little bit more strategy to plug into it somewhere so that it the game doesn't feel like it's, it's a little too light, in my opinion. It's a little too casual. Uh, so the other version that we we did end up trying, the other version this weekend, uh, the cardless version, which is a kind of a more of a traditional take a stock certificate, and you could spend X amount of dollars uh, to lay track, and then each square or each space on the board takes money. Um, I like that version in theory. I think I need to test it more. It, it meant that the turns were longer and a little bit weirder. And as the game progresses, you need to be able to spend more and more. So I need to add some sort of mechanism in. Like in the first round, you can you can lay this much. In the second round, this much. In the third round, this much. Do some tweaking like that. Um, but I also don't know that that version introduced any, any more interesting options or decisions. Or it made the game any better. I'm not pos I'm not convinced that it's better than just the card-based version. So, I'm still hunting a little bit, uh, but I feel really confident in it, and I think that uh, it's worth testing. So if you haven't tried it yet, head on over to Tabletopia, give it a try, let me know what you think. Uh, the rules are pretty good. Um, I'm, I thought today about tweaking some of them, but I think I'm just gonna leave them alone for now and let people play for a little bit and then give me feedback. So I'd really appreciate it if you'd go check it out. Even if you just read the rule book and give me feedback on the rule book, that'd be awesome. Links are in the description. Thank you for being here as always. Uh, what, what did you do this weekend, by the way? Did you play games? I know I asked you on Friday and some of you said you were gonna do some stuff. Uh, I played games, I worked on my basement and I hurt my back. Uh, so I've been kind of out of commission for a little bit. Let me know what you did. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends, wonderful people. I really appreciate you and I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should notice sounds smart is imbroglio. It is a noun meaning colloquially referred to as a sticky situation, a predicament that is difficult to get out of. Our inability to decide which New Year's Eve party to attend created an imbroglio that disrupted our social calendar for months. Imbroglio, I-M-B-R-O-G-L-I-O. I have never heard that word. Imbroglio. That's an interesting word. A sticky situation, like a, like not a catch-22, but just something awkward.